the European Union, a collection of European states who are tied together politically and economically to maintain peace, stability, prosperity and security. Founded after the devastation left by World War II, the Union does still exist today and is still, all things considered, going strong. Many historians date the birth of these ideas too further back. Some would suggest the League of Nations, some to Victor Hugo's 1848 speech, where he mentioned a dream of a United States of Europe. However, some would argue the earliest pitch of this idea goes all the way back to the medieval world proposed by a king of Bohemia, a king named George of Podbrady. First, some backstory. George, son of a bohemian nobleman, first met combat at the age of 14. There, he would rise the ranks and become a major leader in the Hussite rebellions, a religious, pre-Protestant movement that began in Bohemia, over disagreements with the Catholic Church. Eventually, George would defeat an Austrian army led by King Albert II in battle, pushing his prestige further until eventually becoming a major leader of the entire movement. Albert II was succeeded by his son, Ladislaus, but was too young to rule. Wow, what a look. By the way, his other two children also looked like characters right out of Family Guy. <laughs> At this point, Bohemia was split between two separate factions. One was pro-pope, the other, the Hussites, who favoured George. George led the rebellion into and through a civil war, eventually defeating the Catholic leaders of Bohemia. At first, he became protector of Bohemia, regent of the throne, as Ladislaus, although a child, was still the legal king. But Bohemia was still unstable, especially when Ladislaus came of age to rule and announced himself pro-Catholic. But shortly after this, the king dropped dead, childless. I know what many of you are thinking, George had him killed, and people at the time believed that too. But modern science has analysed the body and can confirm it was a natural death. George was elected to serve as king. The Hussites supported him, and the Catholics at least saw his policies as moderate in comparison to other options. And so George of Podbrady became king of a very unstable, religiously diverse Bohemia, surrounded by enemies. But this, diplomatically, is where it gets interesting, and many argue that this was the first ever historical attempt at forming a European Union, a treaty of all Christian powers was proposed. The treaty on the establishment of peace throughout Christendom. A union where all disputes must be settled peacefully under a parliament, holding representatives from all other member realms. All members were forbidden from attacking other members unless the parliament agreed otherwise. If a member of the union wished to attack a non-union member, they would first need to seek the approval from Parliament. The idea even could have had a defensive clause, where an attack on one could be considered as an attack on all, much like the NATO of today and other major alliances. Something that makes sense given the recent fall of Constantinople to the ever-growing Ottoman Empire. It was seen by George as a way to stop the, I quote, abominable Turk. Ideas were even passed around of possibly forming a Christian army led by George that would invade the Ottomans to possibly reclaim Constantinople. The goal was to get this established by 1464 with the original members including Bohemia, Hungary, Poland, Bavaria, France and all Italian states, with other Catholic nations joining later if the model was proven to work. Although scholars point to this as the birth of the idea of European unity, it must be made clear that this was never seen as that at the time, and it was mostly a Christian unity movement, Christianity being the uniting factor, not Europeanism. It was popular with the King of Poland and many German princes within the HRE. It never came to pass, however. 
the original plan was to have a high roll for the Pope in this union, but George pulled back on that idea, angering the Pope, leading to other monarchs turning away. On paper, to us, it may sound very modern, and much like the EU present to this day, but in actual reality, it is clearly inspired from the Crusades, a union of Christian monarchs who agree to maintain peace between themselves to push back the borders of Islam. Therefore, most importantly, the only thing that stands out specifically as modern and new with this movement was the idea of a European Parliament. It is for this reason that many historians jump to this as being the real birth of the EU. On the other hand, there is certainly an argument to make that the union of Greek city-states against foreign outside invaders could also be considered as early inspirations, given that those were also inspired by politics, economics and security. These unions would often stretch outside of Greece itself to all Greek states, but Greek as a name not being used to describe ethnicity, but rather the idea of civilization. It all depends on how we define European, I guess. Comment down below or leave a like if you want to see more videos like this. Subscribe for more, share with anyone else you think may be interested. It merely helps me out. But for now, until the next one, this has been the history of diplomacy.